Hello. Right. Who's that, David? Yeah. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm all right. Um. What do you th what, what do you think? What about him, mate? I mean, this 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 Andrew guy. He's the guy they call David, is he? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tara's talking about him, aren't they? Sorry. Xara's talking about him. Yeah, I've spoken to Xaro. I had Tim Wood round here the other day for six hours. And um, it seems to me like... I don't know. I think it's all orchestrated myself. But Andrew is being discredited on purpose. I was given false information so that I'd go running out there with it because Bill thought I was a loose cannon. Right. And clearly, there, there's some truth to what Andrew's saying, but I think that is more around the Sydney Cook stuff because Fernbridge have done over 50 hours with him. Um, DCI Paul Settle did go to Chris Fay. Um, uh, Fernbridge did go to Andrew first. He quotes on the Express interview, they came to him on his birthday and that was some sometime in 20. 12 or 2013 i think may 2013 they went to him so and, and and they didn't want him to talk about between the ages of 8 and 21 only from there onwards and um i would i would believe the stuff that he said to the express interview i've got the whole interview on tape now either the express were in on setting me up or they've that obviously they they would have had to have gone away and done checks with Fernbridge before they would have printed anything anyway. Even though Andrew in the Express interview, they haven't named names, but I've got the names on tape that they did name, but they haven't named them for legal reasons. So therefore, the the, the story really is is either a wind up and it's been pointless because there's been no names named. But then we stayed down in Hull after that interview and we was going to do the edit there that night in a cabin and Andrew came back with us which I weren't really happy about and um, there was me, Bill, Chris Fay, and my friend Mick and me and Mick literally were just doing the filming didn't want to go to a hole in the first place um, so we're there in the cabin that evening and we was going to do the, the, the edit uh, Bill and Chris went to bed sort of a couple of hours into it and left us with Andrew which I think was the plant for Andrew to then start talking about my ex-manager a guy called Tom Watkins who he claims has abused one of my ex-band members um, so I'm sitting there shocked at my fucking at my head thinking what are you telling me Andrew um, and he goes on to talk about loads of other different various stuff. We go back over the Sydney Cook stuff. And then the next morning, Bill is supposed to be filming his interview with Andrew and Chris Fay from Napix sitting in the interview, confirming some of the stuff that Andrew is saying because other victims had gone to Chris Fay in the past, in the 90s and in the 80s and gone to Napix. And, and Chris Fay was there to confirm that other people had come forward and said these names as well. Right. So that interview, the one for Pie and Mash, right on the end of it, Bill then turns to the camera and says, and there's one more thing I want to talk about, and it's David Icke. Now, Bill knows that I used to sort of watch your videos and, 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 and listen to the stuff that I've been following for a while. Right. And, um... Mate, what, what, what time are you talking about? What, how long ago? How long have I been looking at your videos? How long, how long when um, Maloney said that? Oh, this was in uh, January 2014. Right. Right. And uh, this was the next day after the interview. So the interview went out on the Sunday, which I think was the 12th of January or something, 2014. So this would have been two days before. Okay. Like 10th or 11th. And uh, the end bit, I mean, I can play, uh, if you listen, I'll just, you'll hear the audio. What I do want to talk about that came out is David Icke. Now, Angel, you told me that you had sex with David Icke. Yeah. Where did you have sex with David Icke? We picked him up from the, from the, we picked him, uh, you picked I him picked up? up from Amsterdam with film equipment. Right. Uh, on a boat. On the boat, a big massive 
Who Who thought it was that, Chris? Charles Napier of Azimuth Trust. And the Azimuth Trust is? Uh, Or was? It was a, it went, it offered children in care boating holidays. It particularly specialised in very young disabled children. Okay, now you was on a boat, you was picked up at Amsterdam. Amsterdam with three film crew and a couple of, a couple of, um, three of us were mean, there was, I went with the film crew, I was carrying the stuff and Okay, and stuff this was that. making uh, um, like um, um, pornographic movies, yeah. child, child pornography. The things that they set off in England, we couldn't, they won't, mm. you couldn't go. So uh, you, you, it's went, it, it you went to the Island of We went from England to Innocent, then they picked the camera people up from, they picked the camera people up first, went over to Amsterdam to get supplies and stuff and pick up. And then you went to the Isle of Wight to to pick up David Icke. And he got on that boat. And he was on that boat, 100%. And there were disabled children. I know, mate. Right? So what he says is that... (laughs) I know, right? He says he gets picked up from Amsterdam with filming equipment on Charles Napier's boat with the Azimuth Trust. They 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 come over to the Isle of Wight and pick you up. You get on the boat, and then um, on the boat there's disabled kids and stuff, and you're having sex with one of the one of the disabled kids, and also you you supposedly have sex with Andrew in one of the cabins, right? Right. Right. So uh, that's that's what he's saying about you. Then has he said this publicly? No, he hasn't said it publicly, and Bill hasn't published this interview. Yeah, well, uh, it, it ain't going to happen anyway because personally, I think I'm there filming, and this was for me to put out. I think, David. Yeah, I tell you what, mate. Um, uh, that is so ridiculous. I know, mate. I know. Don't worry, I've got you back. I'm not, I'm not, that, that's just the last thing I am. I've right. got another video, right, which Bill yes. has given to me, where Andrew is in Bill's flat. Now Andrew's changed his story. You haven't have se- you haven't had sex with him on the boat now, right? You right. apparently now you're a hypnotist and you've hypnotised the kids and you've made the kids have sex with Andrew. Right. Well, this is the thing that um, this is so ludicrous and the story is so implausible that either Maloney has done this on purpose or he's a complete freaking moron. Um, we, it's the, the only, only one of those two things can be true. Um, this is extraordinary. What do you know about Maloney? Well, Bill, all I know is uh, the way that I meet Bill is, you know what I mean, I've had a lot of spare time on my hands, David, as you know, you know what I mean, I haven't been in a band for many, many years. Okay. I got ridiculed back in the day, a bit like you did with the, with the ecstasy comment and John Major getting involved and all the rest of it. Since then, my life's just been shit. And... Um, you know, I'm up late at night, been looking at a lot of videos, your videos. I've kind of gone around the whole block, you know, 9-11, fucking every, every conspiracy that there is. And um, one night I'm looking at um, Sun, Sea and Satan, Bill's thing in Jersey. Yeah, which was very poor, actually. Oh, it was crap. It's just a bloke out there with a fucking camcorder having a rant and a scream up and nothing really happens in it. You know what uh, I mean? Exactly. I know, it was it was so I watched it, but back then, you know, it was new to me. So I'm having a look at it, and then uh, I went round the corner shop, but, but some time after that, and I bumped into one of my old neighbours from when I lived further down in Walthamstow. Right. Her, her name was Beverly, and uh, I didn't recognise her at first, and then once I did, we got into the reason as to why she moved, and she goes, oh, I moved because of that thing that was living next door to you. I said, what, you're talking about that, that strange gay geezer that lived next door to me called Rick? And she said, yeah, I don't know if his name was Rick, but he was something to do with the killing of that Jason Swift. So when I got back, I googled it, and this guy, whoever it was that was living next door to me, was something to do with Sidney Cook's gang. Right. So after I've watched a few more of Bill's videos, I, see, I looked on his YouTube, and I see one of him crying, bawling his eyes out. And at the time, I fell for it. I thought, fucking, why is no one helping this geezer? He seems like up front, he's in their face, like saying it how, they, how, how it should be said to these people, I believe. And uh, so I thought, right, fuck it, I'm going to contact this geezer. <coughs> so I send him an email. Well, I, I see him on Twitter. And, uh, and, and he comes back and he says, uh, email's in the description. Email me and I'll give, you, I'll give you the number. I get the number. I start talking to him. And uh, it's about a week later when I first go to meet him. 
Now, now he sends one of his police friends, who I I am being told his name is DCI John Wedger. Right, you guys demanded back our most controversial ex-cop. Are you enjoying the song that Brian Harvey's done about us? Brilliant, I'm touched. Effing John Wedger, <laughs> effing Sean Atwood, <laughs> effing Bill Maloney, effing <laughs> Ian Puddock. They all work for the New World Order. Personally, I think this geezer is this Nathan bloke out of Fernbridge. That's what I think now. So this John Wedger picks me up. Uh, drives me up to Parliament, I meet Bill in the back of another car, and then we go round to Parliament to meet Ben Fellows, who's just finishing his uh, his walk for corruption, right? Right. So uh, Ben Fellows is there, he does a little piece to camera, like, I'm there, and, like, yeah, I'm here, and, you know, if Ben does the lie detector test, we're going to go in and see, you know, what's going on about this Kenneth Clark allegation. Right. And, um... I think I was, I was supposed to be there just naively going, yeah, the geezer's a paedophile, you know what I mean? And, and then I would have been in the court with Ben Fellows perverting the course of justice. Tell, tell me this, Brian, what the hell is Maloney's connection to the police then? Well, uh, this is, this is what I... With the police, except that, you know, passing on what he, he claims to know. Well, I, but the obvious question to me is if Andrew was Operation Fernbridge's chief witness, who the fuck is Bill Maloney, man about town with a camcorder, getting to interview him? This well, is this is what I can't understand. If, 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 if Andrew is their chief witness, then they're in trouble. I mean, I, I didn't realise um, that the, the Andrew interview you sent me was the guy who was saying this about me. Yeah. Um, but um, I, when I watched it, you know, the Daily Express version you sent me? Yeah. I, I, I saw... Um, a, a broken man. Yeah. A very weak man now, because yep. they break your backbone and your spirit. Yeah, they've broke him, all right. But, but even when I've, I've met people like that many, many times, broken people all over the world. Yeah. Um, but he was, he was, he always, uh, he, he also struck me as being extremely suggestible. Um, and, and you know what happens with um, a lot of these people is they get so abused, they get so tortured, yeah. so in fear of anything that smacks of authority. Yeah. That, and, and they get used to telling the abuser what they want to hear just to try to, you know... Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, and, but, yeah. Well, to tell, telling the abuser what they want to hear just so that they, um, you know, it, it, obviously in their mind they're thinking, well, I might not get hurt so much. Yeah. And what, what, once that suggestibility is there that that desire to to please then basically you, you as a witness you're gone yeah this, um unless the, the uh, questions are phrased in a very neutral way um then you know you, you you're almost going to agree to anything 